Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the call 103, which is a session on um, real-time uh, SMS notifications in Domino with Twilio. Uh, so in this presentation, I'm going to be going through what Twilio is, uh, what kind of options you have uh, <clears throat> when it comes to integration with Domino. Um, and we'll give some examples, uh, real life examples of where I've used uh, this at this company. Before we go any further, first of all, let me thank our sponsors. Um, obviously without them, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you very much to those. Uh, if you have any needs of their products, obviously good companies to use. So uh, let's get into the meat of this presentation. So what we're gonna cover is what is Twilio? I'll give you two demonstrations of real life examples. Um, Rosie's Restaurant, order notification system, um, the Yellow Bird Flying Club booking system, and also I'll show you how you can get started. Uh, so first of all, what is Twilio? Well, Twilio is basically a hosted platform that allows developers to make, receive phone calls, send and receive text messages. Um, they can do IVR, um, uh, voice recognition trees, all sorts of things, all through pretty easy, powerful use, to use. APIs, um, they're kind of the darling of the stock market at the moment. They went public a couple of years ago, um, but there's a good reason why they're doing well. And it's really is they have great integration. And one of the really nice things is, is they have really good documentation. Uh, so many times today, you know, companies kind of put documentation as an afterthought. Uh, Twilio uh, seem to have focused on that from the beginning. Uh, to be clear, I have no relationship to Twilio. I don't own any Twilio stock. Um, I've just been a user and the first time I used Twilio was for the Yellowbird booking system, um, which was over 10 years ago now that I built that um, and it's still in use today. So uh, let's get into a couple of examples. The first one was actually done this year. Um, a friend owns a restaurant, uh, which is Rosie's restaurant. Um, they, like many restaurants, were impacted by COVID-19. Uh, they were forced to close for for a month or so. Um, and then when they were allowed to reopen, the only thing they could do was a takeout pickup window service. Um, now they only had like a single window for people to be able to pick up uh, their food when it was ready. So what they wanted to avoid uh, was people kind of grouping together, clumping together outside whilst waiting for their food. So um, I was chatting to them one day and, and I said, well, we could do a notification system where we send a text message um, to people when their order's ready. Um, and, you know, and I said, I go using Twilio and Domino and kind of build it in a weekend. And that's pretty much what happened. Um, so the solution uh, that we built um, is a web-based order entry system. Uh, I designed it for the iPad. Um, the wait staff that are taking orders and letting people know the orders are ready, they know how to use their point of sale system, which is push button system. Um, most of them don't really have a clue how to use the internet, to be honest. They know how to get their email on their phone. And they know how to use TikTok. So it had to be something that was very easy to use, not complex, and, and basically did the job they wanted. They, they have no IT infrastructure. Um, their point of sale system runs on its own little private network and it's probably about 20 years old now, but it does their job. So they've had no need to upgrade. Um, we wanted it to be able to send text messages using the Twilio API. So um, as I said, this system was built in uh, a weekend. Um, it's nothing fancy, but it does the job that it was intended for. They love it. And uh, I'll give you uh, a demonstration of, of how that looks right now. So let me, bring across a couple of things. So I have um, here uh, just Google Voice, which is what's gonna allow me to see incoming text messages. So I don't have to share my phone for you to be able to see them. And now I'm just gonna load up uh, the order system page. So the order system page is really just two uh, entry fields where every order that they take has an associated order number. And all they do is they punch in that number into the system they put in a telephone number and uh i can't remember the number for this thing nine seven eight three seven eight eight three seven eight 
and 5126. So what they do is when a customer orders some food, they take their, put in the order number and they take their phone number and then that pops up over here. And you can see there's actually another order they just entered into the system. Somebody's ordered some takeout. And what happens is they can either delete this if somebody comes and picks up their food without asking for it, or if they click the, the send button, then that in the background will send a text message. And here you can see it's come into uh, the, the text number here and it tells them their food order number is ready in the main dining room. And thank you from all of us at Rosie's. Um, and it even has the little emojis in here and things. So that's basically the system that we built for them where they can, you know, put in their orders and send a notification to the customer. Um, what's happened since this was originally deployed is they now are actually able to take uh, clientele inside the restaurant. They had to put up various, you know, plastic um, separators and things like that. So now the system's primarily used um, for people uh, that are ordering over the phone and it lets them know if they're sitting in the parking lot that they can come in and grab their food. We did add a couple of little extra things like they can see a, a chart on how many orders they're placing each day or we can view a seven day chart, things like that. Um, and it just gives them a quick way of seeing how they're doing on a day to day situation. So the Twilio integration that's taking place there is Domino is calling a Twilio service to send a text message to the number that was entered. So nothing complex and we'll, we'll get into how that was actually done in a second. Let me go back to the presentation and give you another example of what was done with Twilio. So uh, previously I was a member of Yellowbird Flying Club. Um, Yellowbird Flying Club has existed now for over 50 years, uh, but for 40 years it used a paper-based booking system. And what it meant was that if you wanted to book the airplane, you had to go to the airport, look in the book, see if it was available on certain dates, things like that. Um, or you'd have to phone up and hope that there was somebody at the airport that could take a look and they could tell you if it was available or not. Um, being somebody that, you know, <laughs> was more modern than that, it drove me crazy that I had to go to the, uh, to the airport to do that. So I spoke to the members and I said, look, if I could build something, what can we do? Um, and some of the members, again, weren't very internet savvy. Um, you know, they, they, this was 10 years ago. They, they didn't have an iPhone or anything like that, but they liked the idea of visiting the website, not, uh, uh, not having to visit the airport, but there was a few things they wanted. So they wanted to be able to make a reservation still through the phone, because what would they would sometimes do is they would call somebody at the airport and the person at the airport would grab the, the booking sheets and they would write in their booking. So I had to come up with a system where one, they could do a web-based calendar. Two, they could still use the telephone to make a booking. Um, and I wanted to make sure things as well, like somebody might have a plane booked and they might cancel it the day before. And if you knew they'd canceled it the day before, you could book it yourself and go flying the next day, things like that. Um, so again, this was built purely on Domino. It's a web-based application. Um, and basically it's a calendar that I used a calendar called DHTML X, uh, which gave me a lot of features for like displaying the calendar. Um, and it does those things that needed. So one, you can call into a telephone number and book, uh, the airplane Two, um, you can get notifications from the system if a booking changes or if a booking is deleted, things like that. So again, rather than talk about it, let's give you a demonstration of, of how this actually looks. Uh, let's bring up the right page. So this is actually the live booking system and I can go through weeks to see when the reservations were, who had them, the times they were, things like that. Uh, so if I jump to today, I can see there's currently no bookings. Um, so let's just put one in here. Actually, that, let's put it a little later. Um, I'm going to call it Twilio Demo. And that's in there. And I can you know, move this appointment around. Um, I'm just going to add another one here. And save that. Now, if there's a booking 
if I click on it, you can see they get these options, which are things like viewing the details, deleting the booking, or setting up notifications. And if I set up notification options, I can say, you know, notify me when this is deleted, notify me when this is changed. I want to get an email and also send me a SMS message. So I'm going to hit save on that. So now if I move this appointment, just say move it a couple of hours further forward, then what will happen is that will send a notification message. And here you can see it's come in and it says, Automated yellow bird notification, booking for Carl title on this date, changed from this to this. And what that allows me to do, if I was the person that didn't have the plane booked and I wanted to say, oh, I wanted it at uh, three o'clock, it's now available, I can go get it. And the same thing, if I delete this, I can now get a notification, should come in, there we go, saying that I deleted that appointment. So that's great. And that's again, powered by Twilio send SMS notifications. But one of the things that Twilio can also do is interactive uh, voice uh, menu systems. So let me make a telephone call to the Yellow Bird booking system. And this is all again back end by Domino. Welcome to the Yellow Bird scheduling Twilio. system. Press one and to hear today's schedule. Can Press somebody two give me a to book the up? airplane. Just Press three to hear, hear tomorrow's the, uh, schedule. Press four telephone. to hear bookings for a specific day. Press okay. five okay, to great. hear the P's atis. So let me let me call that back again, and then I'll explain what's going on. So I'm going to call this, and I'm going to bring up a keypad because I'm going to enter. Welcome some to things. the Yellow Bird scheduling system. Press one to hear today's so schedule. I'm Press one. two to book the airplane. Retrieving today's schedule. Carl Tyler, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Press 1 to hear okay, so today's schedule. Press now 2 let's just enter to book another the airplane. One. Press 3 to hear tomorrow's save. schedule. Press now 4 back, to hear bookings for I a specific day. Today Press again. 5. Retrieving today's schedule. Carl Tyler, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Carl Tyler, 10 p.m. to midnight. Press 1 to hear today's schedule. So somebody can check the schedule um, just by calling in, but what about booking it? So each user in the system has their own PIN number. And what they can do is they can call in. And one of the options is to Welcome make to the a Yellow Bird scheduling system. Press one to hear today's schedule. Press two to book the airplane. Press three, please enter your PIN. Welcome Carl Tyler. Please enter the month followed by the day. For example, February 6th. You entered Sunday, November 29th, 2020. Please enter the start and end time Domino. you wish to book the plane. For example, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., enter 0915. The booking was successfully made. Press 1 to hear today's so I schedule. Made a booking Press 2 there for the to book the airplane. Press 3 to hear tomorrow's um, schedule. November. So let's go over here and uh, look at the 29th of November. And November 29th, there is that booking that we just made. Um, so that's a Domino backend database interacting through Twilio um, and a, a voice uh, menu system. And I'll, I'll explain how that works a little bit as well. So I'll go back to the slides. Okay. So how do you get started uh, with Twilio? So the first thing you need to do is sign up for an account. Um, you can get a free trial account with them uh, where I'll actually give you like a free trial number uh, and you can get started. Um, this link here is actually a referral link. You don't have to use that, but if you do use it, I'll get a $10 credit and you will get a $10 credit as well. Uh, you're gonna sign a telephone number and they're gonna give you uh, an account SID and an authorization token. And you're gonna need those when you come to uh, using their SMS services or other services uh, within the application. So what I'm gonna show you now is just a really simple Lotus script um, page that's just gonna send a text message. It's not gonna do anything else but send a text message. Um, and if you get hold of this presentation, I didn't put it in his images. I put it in his text because it's always nice to be able to cut and paste versus having to retype things in. It takes you back to the 80s when you're trying to type in that Commodore 64 program and uh, you miss a letter or a character. 
So <clears throat> this page, all we're doing is just defining the variables. And there's a few obvious ones, which is there's the two number that you want to send the SMS message to. There's the text message itself. Um, there's a URL, which is the Twilio API service. Um, and you need that and uh, includes things like the version number uh, of the Twilio service you're doing. Um, the request, which is basically a combination of the, the to number, the message, uh, the from number, things like that. Uh, then you've got your Twilio authorization uh, code, which is a combination of your account SID and that auth token, because you'll be doing basic authentication using that. Um, <clears throat> and so we're just going to put those in variables. Um, and I've changed my account SID here and my auth token so that you don't go using my account. But basically, we're just going to assign some values now to um, those those variables. So we've got the Twilio code version, which at the moment is 2010.0401. And the reason why they have this code version is if they change things, your URL can still be calling the old version and still be working. So it doesn't break a service that you may be using. So for example, uh, the booking system, which I said I wrote 10 years ago, I hadn't touched that for about eight years until they finally got to a point where something they deprecated uh, they, they finally stopped supporting that eight-year-old version of code. And I just had to go in and change the version number uh, and change one of the values they used. Um, the from number is the number associated with your Twilio account. Um, and you can select numbers from you know, different parts of the country. My account SID and my authorization token. And then I combine that into a string called Twilio authorization which combines the Twilio account SID and the auth token, and it encodes it with base64. Um, the encode base64 function here I used, um, you can just find load of script ones uh, all over the internet for that. It's, it's nothing fancy. And then the number I'm going to send it to, and then the Twilio message. And you may be wondering, what's the percent %F0, percent %9, and all that sort of stuff? That's an emoji for a, for a globe, for a world uh, icon. Um, and I'll give you a URL at the end where you can kind of find the hex codes for different emojis. So then the final part of the code is using the um, fairly new uh, create HTTP request, request that came with Lotus Script. Uh, we're going to create um, a web request from the note session. We're going to add the headers, which is we specify a content type of uh, application www form URL encoded. And then we send the then we send the authorization set the authorization header as well. So that's putting in that basic and that encoded uh, base64 text. Then the URL we're going to call. And again, Twilio has great documentation on the different URLs and things that are available for their APIs. Is a combination of the Twilio API URL, the code version that I already mentioned, and then my Twilio account SID. And because we're sending a message slash messages. And then the final part is the actual request that's going to get sent to that URL. And again, it's a built up string, which contains the number I'm sending to, the number it's from, and also the body of the message. So that's that hello world with the little emoticon. And then the final part is I'm just going to output to the web page um, what's going on. So indicate that I'm calling the HTTP post, the Twilio URL used, the request. And then we're going to actually send the HTTP request. And we're just going to print out the web request response code so we can see if it you know, came back as a failure or was successful. So let me go over to another page. And we'll drag that over here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to refresh this page, which is calling the agent. And if I go here. We can see a message has come in that says, hello world. And you can see it's got the emoticon, the emoji uh, of the little globe symbol. Um, so that's just like a Lotus Script agent that could be called from any other Lotus Script, Domino agent, Java agent, whatever. Uh, I use Lotus Script HTTP post because it was just super simple, super clean. And it's really easy to demonstrate in this video what's going on there. Um, but they also have uh, helper libraries. So if you're familiar and use Java, 
they have helper libraries for Java that also make this very simple uh, with requests to send messages and things like that. So let me show you now, though, how the booking system worked, because that's a little different um, to the Lotus script just sending a text message out because it was having interaction coming back in. So let me bring up uh, Domino. And actually, we're going to go to Twilio, actually, because I'm going to show you what happens here. So I'm going to log into Twilio. OK. Um, <clears throat> so within Twilio, when you set it up, you can get your different accounts, things like that. And you will get a number. You, you can get a telephone number assigned. And when you have a phone number, you can choose uh, what happens when somebody calls that number. So you can see this number here, my 938 number, has a webhook assigned to it. And it says, when you call, uh, when somebody calls this number, call this URL. So you can see it's a dominant URL. So if I actually go and paste this in, you can see what gets returned is actually just some um, XML. And this XML says, you know, it's a response. We're going to gather a number. And when we have that number that we've specified, in this case, it's going to be one digit. We're going to call another agent. And we're going to pass that number to it. But you can see here there's commands. And let's just make this a little bigger. Oh, can't make that bigger. Um, and this is going to play some stored MP3 files that are stored in the database. And these MP3 files are what you hear when I call the system. So if I just move this here and this one here, and if I make a call to the system again, if you uh, listen. Welcome to the Yellowbird scheduling system. Press one to hear today's schedule. Press two to book the airplane. Press three to hear tomorrow's schedule. Press four to hear bookings for a specific day. Press five to hear the P's ATIS. And so what's happening is it's playing the MP3s from the server through the phone. So the first one was welcome to Yellowbird scheduling, press one to hear today's schedule, press two. And so as soon as I press a return digit in that call, it's then going to call this uh, agent with that value passed. So I'm going to just copy this again. Uh, we're going to copy this over here. And uh, num digits, uh, we're going to say one. Oh, and uh, I probably passed, I've missed passing a parameter as what is. So let me go and actually just show you the code on what's actually happening here. So uh, the first agent was the welcome message. Come on, Domino server. Oh, this is the funky thing that happens where I have to hit control break to make it stop and then it'll connect straight away. Come on. There we go. So the first one was that welcome menu. And this is just, you know, uh, unexciting low script code, which is I'm just going to, it just prints out XML. But you can see it's got that response. We gather the number of digits, the agent that's going to get called uh, with a post, and then the MP3s that it's going to play. And it's going to store a log of the call. So it, it, it tracks everybody that calls in and what they do. So the next one was menu selection. So here is menu selection. And it's just a simple case where it's, oh, it's digits it was looking for, um, where basically it gets the digits. It actually builds up what the date is today and tomorrow, so it'll be able to return the information. Um, and basically, if it's one digit that's pressed, it's going to play the audio of, you know, I'm retrieving today's message. And then when it redirects, it will return, in this case, uh, a notes view that's going to return XML. And it uses a start key and an end key of uh, today's date and tomorrow's date. So it will only return the bookings in that view for those times. And uh, Twilio will 
you know, understand that. So let's just open that view so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so here we can see, you know, it's got all these bookings, but it's from like a number of days that it's showing. So if I was to put in the start key equals which are domino view information, and we're going to put that in. Uh, let's see, what's the day? Uh, uh, 1028. So let's put in the right dates. 1028 until 1029. And it should give us the bookings that are for today. So you can see that view, I have it just returning, you know, the say command is what it's going to use the computer voice for. And it tells me there's a booking from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., uh, 10 p.m. to midnight. And then the redirect is where does it go after it's it said those statements. And in this case, it goes back to repeating the welcome menu. Um, in the case of making a booking, it's basically pretty similar in that a menu selection uh, would be two here, which was, you know, first it's going gonna, it's gonna to say, please enter your pin. And you can see it's asking for four digits. It gives them 10 seconds to open it. Um, and then there's an agent that's going to look up the pin. And so if I go look at that agent, you'll see that if it's a successful looking up the pin, uh, let's see, it's going to do a lookup. And you know, if there's no pin, no pin match, it will tell the person that there was no pin. If there was a, a match, uh, you know, it, it, and, and there's a booking on that day, it'll tell them it already exists, that kind of thing. But you can see all these uh, messages are what are called twi uh, twi Twiml, T-W-I-M-L. Um, and it's really easy to build these kinds of systems just with simple agents um, to send these notifications out. So uh, let me just come back to slides. Uh, so um, I kind of rushed through that really quickly. but. Um, there's plenty of time for questions, but things that are useful to you, the Twilio website, uh, again, there's the referral URL or just go to twilio.com. Um, this is a URL, a little website I use to find emojis and their UTF-8 code. Um, and you can type in things like, you know, clown or, or whatever you want to search for and it will give you the UTF codes. And then there's uh, our company website, which to be honest is an embarrassment. We haven't updated it in a long time. Um, but if you do want to get hold of me, that's one way. Uh, the other way is you can call me or send me an email. So I'm happy to um, answer any questions people may have. Stunned into silence. So if you do have a question, feel free to raise your hand. If you're all just munching on your lunch, that's also fine. Did I mute myself 30 minutes ago and nobody's heard a word I said? <laughs> well, did, um, I don't see any questions. No. Did, uh, was that useful? Hands up? Not useful? Okay. Is the Twilio service, it's, it's a charge. There's a charge of like, so Brian Cooney asks, is the Twilio service a charge per month or per call? So the way the Twilio service works is they charge you for the phone number, which is about $1 uh, a month. Um, and then they charge you per call or per text message. Um, so it's pretty cheap. It's less than like a penny, I think, for, for sending a text message. Um, and one of the nice things is if you're like a, a, a vendor or a developer and you have customers you want to do this for, you can create within your Twilio account kind of different numbers and things. And you can associate a different credit card with each of those numbers. Um, so you know, like for Rosie's, her, her telephone number is on her credit card and she pays for the renewal, the renewal of, of fees and things like that. Um, they've been paying about 10 bucks a month for the text messages they send. Um, and I, so to give you an example of the booking system, the flying booking system, I won a Twilio developers uh, competition 10 years ago with that app. Um, and, uh, they gave me a hundred dollar credit 
um, that hundred dollar credit only ran out last year. So, um, it, you know, it depends on obviously it depends on how many text messages you use, but uh, it, it, it's it's very reasonable. Uh, Richard Cotrim asks, do you know if Twilio is available outside the US also? Yes, it is. Um, Twilio has, uh, you can get different numbers in different different countries. And actually there are some things that are nice about SMS in other parts of the world that you don't have in the US. Like you can have um, alphanumeric uh, alpha characters for your Twilio number. So it can actually say like this message is coming from Rosie's and things. In the US, they don't allow that with um, text numbers, but in other countries they do. Um, so yes, uh, Twilio is available outside the US. And Lance from Notes Mail Consulting, let me uh, allow you to talk. Lance, you can talk if you have a question and you are currently muted. There you go. Oh, oh yeah, I, that, my question was just praise for you. That was uh, amazing, I'm very impressed. I love it, uh, it's, it's great. Some stuff I've been doing for some customers was, was the old school way of sending email to text. Yep. But obviously, obviously yours is so integrated with XML and everything and the hooks and APIs that it's it's a robuster solution. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, so about 20 plus years ago, I set up a website called leavemeamessage.com and I used those email addresses for text messages. But you had to kind of, the, the problem I found with that was you had to work out what telephone company they were with and things to know which email address to use and all right. that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, we, ha we have an app that we send it to about 20 yeah um and then basically 19 of those are really spam because it's not the real number right it right sends to everyone yep so it gets a little messy yeah but it but it works i suppose you know it, yeah it works it works and, and it's free it's better what and it's free right right yeah but you can't do as much as powerful as what you have yeah no and to be honest you know I don't really program much. I tend to project manage and architect solutions. And and like I said, the Rosie's thing was built in like a weekend and Twilio is part of the reason why that was possible. Um, the same with the interactive voice uh, system for the booking system was, you know, being able to write really simple Lotus script agents with just those simple commands like say and gather and things made it really simple um it, it, it really is a system a great system and the other thing as i said is it's like they have documentation which which i really appreciate well that's great yeah i mean you inspired me with that that's great no definitely have a play with it any other questions Man, I sped through that like crazy. I don't see any other questions, but I'll give it a couple of minutes just in case uh, you're typing. <laughs> 